To all those watching, this episode is not made for kids. It is made for older adults and anyone a fan of the old series. Enjoy the fucking video! Happen. Huh? Uh, uh, oh! Oh! Shh, crap! What time is it? Uh, um, <clears throat> hey guys, uh, um, so, uh, here's the story. <clears throat> so things weren't going so well for our three strike breakers. <laughs> they had been stuck in the sheds for roughly three days now, and they were regretting it. Especially Henry, who was stuck arguing with Gordon. You know, I've got to hand it to you, Gordon. This was absolutely the most stupidest thing you thought of! Three engines going on strike for the dumbest of reasons! What were you thinking?! First off, Henry, at least I was thinking of our health instead of wondering what my driver would think of me. She was your driver, not your dumb girlfriend! Well, Amy was the only one who cared about how I felt! She may not have been like a girlfriend to me, but she was a supportive one! Well, at least I had a plan! What did you do? Just sit there on your ass like a baby? Oh, right! Your amazing plan! So worked out, all right! And look at where it's got us now! Oh my god, shut up! Just shut up! Both of you actually shut the fuck up! I can't do this! Just shut up! The hell is wrong with you? What do you mean what's wrong with me? I listened to your dumbass, that's what's wrong with me! All I wanted was to be a really useful engine and work hard! I served in the fucking war! If this is how I turned out, well thanks a fucking lot, Gordon! Wow, James. I'm sorry you've been feeling this way. Or oh, don't you even, Henry. I'm not in a damn mood. What the hell was that? James, you good, buddy? Me? Good? No, of course I'm not Thomas. If I were good, I wouldn't be in this fucking shed. Shut up with these two bastards! Hey! Watch your tone with me, soldier. I'm sorry, Thomas. But thanks. Oh, did I forget to mention that James was slowly losing it? Whoops. <clears throat> anyway, Thomas had come by to tell the engines that the Fat Controller would be coming tomorrow. I hope you guys understand now that being really useful doesn't mean being foolish. Now I have to go. I have a train to pull. Oh, and Henry, your replacement driver is coming tomorrow. Any idea who it is? Only that it might be a princess. I 
wonder where Thomas is. You know, he's supposed to take this passenger train. I forgot to tell you, the Fat Controller gave Thomas a message to tell the big engines. Look, there he is. Hello, Thomas. Sonic. How did it go? It went... relatively well. We heard James screaming like a crazed maniac. Oof. That bad, huh? Any word on Henry's driver? Yeah, she's on her way. Uh, her little knight is coming along from some kingdom as well. Will she be okay being an engineer? How do you know her? Sonic says his dad used to participate in these fighting competitions for fun. I think they were called Smash Brothers? I found her contact info and she said she's been needing a job for a while along with her partner. Anyway, we've wasted enough time as is. Is this our train? Yes, it is. It's going up to kill Dane. Then afterwards, Percy will need help with how to sort out a goods train. Thanks, Edward! I'll be back as fast, but reliable as I can be. Hello there, Percy, Annie, and Clarabelle. How was the branch line run? It really went well, Edward. Percy's doing an excellent job running Thomas's branch line. Oh, great, great. Splendid job. Thomas has just left for Kildane, so he'll be back afterwards to show you how to organize a goods train. It's all going to be great. Thanks, Edward. I think I need to go fill up on water. Alrighty then. I'm off to collect some coal from the docks. I'll be back soon. One person I know. Hi, Tails! Hi, Amy. And who might this be? I'm Percy. How come they call you Tails? It's because of his two tails, Percy. Wow, that's so cool! Is that Tails I see? Hey, Sonic! Thomas! How's everyone? We just came back from Kildane. And I think I'm supposed to help you with organizing a goods train, Percy. Oh, yes, indeed. Now, Percy knew about trucks, thanks to Edward. But when it came to putting them on a train, it was a little complicated for him. So that whole afternoon, Thomas and Percy had organized every practice train and headed for the sheds that night. Sir Top and Hat was waiting for them. 
Ah, Shomish, Hershey, spread the job with your practice trains. I'm very proud of the two of you. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Sir? sir? Yes, James? I'm tired of sitting in the sheds all day. Can I come back to work? Hmm. I'm not sure. Do tender engines shunt their own trains? Yes, yes sir. sir. Gorgin? <laughs> yes, sir. Excellent. Was that so hard? I'm glad you three understand now that tender engines must do the jobs they are assigned, despite how belittling it is. Anyway, Gordon, Henry, and James, this is Percy. I'm well aware you haven't met yet. And Henry? Yes, sir? This is your new driver. Meet Princess Zelda of Hyrule. Salutations, Henry. Oh, uh... Hello. Um, ma'am? Who's here? This is Link, my little elf hero of Hyrule. <laughs> um, does he not talk? Like, at all? Those sounds he makes are just how he talks, Thomas. But maybe Monica can do something about it. Nice try, Sonic. I have to examine him before doing any coding. Do not worry about him. Only I can understand him, which is why he travels with me. That seems reasonable. <laughs> Looks like Henry got a fireman too. Lucky. Anyway, the big engines will run the main line, and Thomas, Percy, and Jesuit will play in the shadow. Play? I'm confused. He means Percy. I can go back to my branch line while you and Edward can help out at the yards. Precisely, Chomish. The next day, Thomas was back on his branch line, and Edward continued showing Percy how to work in the yards. As for Gordon, Henry, and James, they were back on regular duties. Just as Percy shunted Gordon's express coaches to the platform. Hmm, nicely done, little Percy. The express. One of the most important trains of the Northwestern Railway must be in the right place where you need it. Uh... Do not worry your head, Percy. Gordon is trying to say thank you without admitting to needing your assistance. Oh, well, thank you, Big Gordon. Don't call me that. How come? Don't you normally talk to other engines by noting their sizes? Yes, but not to me. Oh, that's bullshit! Percy, language! I'm sorry, Amy, but that's being a total hypocrite. He does have a point, Gordon. Why dishonor your comrades by acknowledging their sizes, but they cannot do it to you? Where is the fairness in that? Percy! Can you come over here? I need some of your assistance. Coming! This isn't over. <laughs> Shadow, am I in deep scrap metal? Very. Hey, Edward. Oh, I know that face. Gordon? Gordon. Yeah, don't worry about him. He's always... prideful. Yeah, I guess. Still an asshole. Whoa! Where'd you learn that language? Shall it? <laughs> I should have figured. Uh, Monica, you might wanna... Fuck! Anyway, I need your help, Percy. Those trucks there need to be taken to... Ellsbridge. Yeah, it's Ellsbridge. Uh, do you know where that is? Uh, yeah... Thomas's station? That's correct. 
Just leave them in a siding and Thomas should take care of the rest. But be careful coming back, please. Please. How come? The track coming here is the main line, specifically Gordon's line. And he will not stop, so I caution you to be on your guard and whistle at the signal box to switch to the opened line. Did you get that, Percy? Is that all clear? Uh, yeah, I think I got it. Okay, Edward, I'll take the trucks to Ellsbridge. All right, then. And be careful around the bend near the cattle field. That's a dicey spot, trust me. And so Percy and Amy took the trucks down to Ellsbridge and left them in the sidings. As Percy made it past Crosby, there was a signal box that could lead Percy onto the other tracks. Unfortunately, Percy forgot to take Edward's advice to whistle to the signal box, so they didn't hear him. Maybe they're busy. I don't know, Percy. I'll take a quick peek. You wait here. Okay, Amy. Amy had gone inside to look around to see the problem, only to find that the machinery was broken. What the? Who, who could have done this? Meanwhile, down the line, disaster was coming quickly. Gordon was speeding down the line at full speed and wasn't aware that Percy was on the line in front of him. Hmm. Knuckles, someone left a goods train on the line, I think. Your eyesight is better than mine. Let me have a look. That's not a goods train, that's Percy. Percy! What's he doing on the main line? Yeah, I wish I was kidding, Bomi. It's all destroyed. And it looks like someone stole some of the parts. Oh my. Well, thanks for letting me know, Amy. I'll run a quick investigation and find the culprit. All right, thank you. Amy, where are you? Get out of the way. Oh, shit. Hang on, Percy. Amy rushed out to Percy's cab, trying to put him in reverse as fast as she could. When she did, Percy started too quickly that he accidentally bumped Amy out of his cab, which made Percy become a runaway. Help! I want to stop! I want to stop! Gee. I wonder where Percy is. He was supposed to be back by now. Hmm, something doesn't seem right about this. Look, there's Gordon and Knuckles. Let's ask them. Gordon, Knuckles, have you seen Percy? He was supposed to be here by now and I'm getting a little worried. Oh yes, we definitely have seen Percy. We nearly smashed him to pieces while passing Crosby. You what? What Gordon means is that Percy nearly ran into us and is now currently running bunker first on the main line. What about Amy? Where is she? Amy! Help me! Hold on, Percy! I'm coming! We should tell Elder Cattle to come take us to the beach, Mugman! Eh, I don't know, Cuphead. Elder Kettle doesn't like being in the sun that much. We double down! What does that even mean? I don't know. I just heard Chalice say it. Percy had been on the run for what felt like hours. Amy finally managed to jump inside into his cab. 
thanks to her Pico Pico hammer and managed to slow Percy down. Right into a siding next to Lower Suttery, into a pile of earth. Finally, I stopped. Oh, my poor baby, are you all right? Yeah, just out of breath and very tired. Look, here's a water tower. Let's fill you up and I'll tell the painters to give you a new coat of paint, okay? Thank you, Amy. I found him, Edward. He's over here. Oh, oh, thank goodness. Are you okay, Percy? I'm okay, Edward. And I'm sorry for getting in your way, Gordon. There's no need to be sorry, little Percy. Miss 21 had finished her investigation, and it seems one of her employers has damaged her technology and ran off before you showed up. Any ideas who? She does. And you're not gonna like it. I wish I could lie and say it was someone else. But I'm afraid it was indeed. Eggman! Here? That's right. So we must be careful on what we do. No. No, that makes sense. What did? That day, that day Metal Sonic uh, set us into the sidings when Thomas was taking Edward's train. He wasn't saving us. He was trying to destroy you. If Eggman is really here, then we really need to be on our toes. I'll alert the other Mobians about this. Everyone else be on guard. If you see something suspicious, report it to either a station master, the Fat Controller, 21, or me. And just like that, every Mobian on Sodor was alerted about Eggman possibly lurking around the island. Everyone else had heard about Eggman as well as after explaining it to Sir Topham Hat. He instructed most of us on our runs to keep an eye out. Unfortunately, we never saw him or heard of any more vandalizations from him ever again. Especially when winter was coming fast. It was late one night, or morning if you will, near the Tidmouth Sheds. Link and Zelda were firing up Henry, who was still in the process of waking up. Your Majesty, what's going on? Good morning, Henry. Apologies for waking you up, but your controller wants us to take the fish train. Oh, the Flying Kipper? Ah, yes, that's it. If we take it well, we might be able to pull the express train soon. Ah, the Flying Kipper. A train that delivers fish to every station along the main line. Sailors would go out at night and catch as much fish as they could. The fishermen would then get it weighed and checked for any diseases or anything else harmful and ship it in to certain Kipper fans depending on the weight of the train. Thomas and I were there, as well as shunting and organizing the train. And someone else from overseas had come by to say hello. Good day, mate. I'm Ten Cents. Who are you? I'm Henry. Nice to meet you, Ten Cents. What brings you to Soto? Captain Stars said you all might need some help with bringing in these ships, so he sent me to help, since I'm a switcher tug. Hey Henry, I just finished with the fish train. Did you get filled up on coal and... Ten cents? Will, 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 but ain't Thomas, me old friend. How you been? I I've been well, how are the other tugs? They've been all well, although Sunshine got left behind. Okay, while you guys are getting along, I'll take my train. Alright, Henry, but be careful. The snow is very dangerous at this time. Thanks for that, Thomas.
That night was going well for him. He was on time and never late. Unfortunately, neither he, Zelda, or Link knew that some faulty points had set Henry into a siding. And the signal should have been set at danger, but Snow had forced the arm down. Meanwhile, down the line, Mario, Luigi, and Shallot were in the brake van in James's goods train, talking and having some cocoa. Uh, no way, Luigi! I then know what happened. Dead. Thomas ran off after Daisy's umbrella blocked my view. Uh, Mamma mia! Uh, so what did you do? I uh, ran after him. It, uh, wasn't easy. Well, easier than a cleaning a mansion, but... It was exhausting. Even Sir Tobin Hat wasn't happy. <laughs> I bet. Nah, he's been on my ass on me and James running these night trains. I don't blame you. Uh, speaking of, uh, Charlotte, uh, what's with the story of this Eggman fellow? Well, apparently 21 says that someone broke into the Crosby signal box and vandalized it. She says Eggman was the only person running that signal box, so he's the only suspect we have. Oh, Mamma mia, that sounds really dangerous. Switching the topic, how are you and James handling the night trains? Uh, we've been doing well. Uh, James has had a few difficulties with it, but I've helped him out at best. <sighs> For fuck's sake! I hate this bullshit! I have to wait for Henry to pass with his fish train in Alaska for 35 minutes! Oh, look, guys. I think James needs to chill out. <laughs> oh, shut the hell up, you gremlins on wheels, if you want to keep living. Mm, gotta say, though, this cocoa is good. Did you guys make this? Oh, yeah. It's our mama's secret recipe. May God bless her soul. I say, isn't the Henry's like, train coming by soon? Oh yeah, but Mario, your train takes 15 minutes to pass. I still say we should. Oh God. What? Oh, what's wrong? Everyone out! What? Why? Oh, oh shit! shit! Breaks! Zelda! Uh, I'm trying, but it's too icy. Ah! Jump clear! I don't even know why I'm out here. What the hell? What the hell did you trucks just do? Explode or something? Henry! That morning, Sir Topham Hat and Android 21 showed up to the accident, as well as the breakdown train and Tails were cleaning up the mess. So sorry. I was watching where I was going. Cheer up, Henry. This accident wasn't your fault. Ash and Snow caused this to happen. But the sickle was down. I I don't understand. The snow on top of the signal added more weight onto the arm, pushing it down, making it look like it was clear. As for you, Henry, I'm sending you to crew. A fine place for chic engines. They'll give you a newer shape and a larger firebox, so you don't need special coal. Won't that be nice? Yes, sir. Oh, right. So, I'm gonna backtrack for just a second, as I haven't discussed about the special coal Henry was using. A week after the big engines were put back in service, Henry started to get worse. And I don't just mean his steaming troubles, either. Sir Topham Hatt came on board one day with Link and Zelda to see what was wrong. And that's when Zelda pointed it out. I think it might be the coal, sir. Because Henry's firebox is smaller. He can't steam up right. Hmm. Well, maybe there's something we can do. Sir, I have an idea. What about Welsh coal? That wouldn't work. That coal burns faster than regular. Not if we put a regular a wall of regular coal around it. Well, it is rather expensive, but Henry does deserve a chance. The next day, Henry felt so much better.
and pulled the first passenger train of the day, and especially rubbed it in Thomas's face, which was the first time I ever heard Thomas say, Well, fuck you too, jackass. Thomas! Anyway, we now take place three months later, and Henry was feeling much better as he came back from crew. Everyone loved Henry's new shape. Ugh, okay, I'm lying again. God, give me a break, alright? Why does Henry get a new shape? A shape good enough for him is good enough for me. Thomas, if Gordon complains about something stupid again, I want you to throw me into the turntable well. Hell no! Hey, hey, Thomas! Language? And Gordon, Henry got his shape because of the flying kipper accident and it would help him steam better. And another thing, Henry whistles in his sleep. No engine should have to hear it while sleeping. It isn't wrong, but we just don't do it. Hypocrite. Never mind him, Henry. I'm glad you're back and I like your new shape. Goodbye, Henry. We're glad you're back, but remember what I said. Later on that day, Henry stopped at Wellsworth. Edward was there with Monica waiting for Gordon to pass. So Henry, how are you doing with your new shape? Are you feeling good? I feel great. Now I see why you guys love running down the main line. If only Gordon wouldn't belittle me for it. Oh, take no notice of him. His arrogance only comes from the thought of him losing the express. Which was nothing. But he doesn't realize it. Soon you'll see. He'll understand. Oh, what is that sound? <laughs> what is its link? <laughs> There's no way that's... Oh, it definitely is. Yep, it was in fact Gordon. His whistle had jammed and was making a loud, long whistle. He rushed past the five at Wellsworth and hurried before anyone could say anything. Well, well, well. Wouldn't you know it. It isn't wrong, but we just don't do it, right? <laughs> now, needless to say that Gordon was indeed in about this whistle, but he thundered down the tracks as fast as he could, thinking he could run from it. It wasn't until he made it to Knapford that every passenger covered their ears. Shoot, even Sir Topham Hack covered his ears. You're cool. Get Gordon out of here and stop that noise! So Knuckles took Gordon to a nearby siding and, without a single hesitation, actually punched his whistle, causing it to hit. <laughs> Afterwards, he had taken Gordon to the works to be checked over. Tails was checking him over to see if there were any damages. Well, good news is he's in good shape, but how did his whistle jam? I just pulled the whistle chain and it got jammed. This probably has Eggman's evil stench all over it. I'm afraid not, Tails. The chain's rusted. It caused the whistle to be stuck on the loop that holds the engine's whistle chain. If there was rope, it'd be different. It could work, but rope can wear out and shred. My best advice, Lapis, is to replace the whistle chain. Who is Lapis? That's my real name. Like my sister's real name is Lazuli, but we'd prefer our numbers instead. After Gordon's repairs, they went home to Tidmouth Sheds where everyone was waiting for him. It isn't wrong, but we just don't do it. Now, where have I heard of that one before? All right, everyone, settle down. Sir Topham Hatt has gone home and has instructed me to hand out your assignments tomorrow. Unfortunately, Gordon, you'll have to be on goods for a week. Bloody damn it! And before you say anything, James, you're on goods as well. Damn it! Thomas has his branch line and Percy shunting with Edward. 
So Henry, you will have to pull the express. Get a good night's rest, everyone. Good night, Miss 18. The next day, Henry was pulling the express better than we expected. Even the coaches thought that he was pulling them better than Gordon. Unfortunately, there was indeed trouble. So, Fat Egg said we gotta throw these rocks at the big green bench. So let's have some fun. You in? Oh, hell yeah, I'm in. But why the hell rocks? So we can break the windows, dumbass. Look, here he comes. Hello up there. Oh, how dare those rotten little punks. Oh, bullseye. <laughs> Come on, let's bail. So, I may have forgotten to mention that those two were here. They were known for causing mischief and mayhem and damaging properties. Some of the passengers were indeed cross, but Zelda had an idea and informed everyone, after getting the coaches replaced, to keep the windows up until they passed the bridge again. Zelda had been purposely keeping ashes in Henry's pipes as it started to take effect. Henry had set off, feeling more stuffed up than usual. Hold on, Henry. We're almost there. Just a few more miles down. Oh, hell yeah! Look at that! Round two! Oh, fuck yeah! This time, let's make this shocking! Electrifying the rocks? That's a bit extreme. Let's fuck this up! Wise Henry, on my mark. Sneeze hard now! Choo! Ah, fuck! I just bought this leather jacket! Ugh, just fail, dumbass! Fuck your jacket! Oh, well done, Henry! And with that, we hadn't seen or heard them after that. Henry and Gordon had afterwards never talked about whistles and or sneezes. But later on, Thomas had a bit of trouble with the police. But that's a story for another day. My name is Sonic, and thanks for listening.